Hey everybody, welcome to Road CC. Uh, I've been out in Northern Italy with Trek looking at their new Damani road bike. Trek's range essentially is divided into Madone, which is the aero one, yeah. the Amonda, which is the lightweight one, and the Damani, which is the endurance one. So it's pretty easy to understand yeah. those three essentially. The new Damani, what's, what, what's happened? What's new? Well, I could tell you, but the best thing to do is to cut to Jordan from Trek, who can give us an overview of the new bike. So let's do that. Hi, my name is Jordan Russo. I'm the director of Global Road Product at Trek Bikes, and I'm here in beautiful Italy to introduce the new Domani. The new Domani has a few changes over the previous version. First and foremost, uh, the new bike is faster, almost a minute per hour faster than the previous bike. And that's through two main benefits. One is uh, an advancement in tube shape, so using cam tail sections, um, we dramatically improve the aerodynamics of the frame. The new bike also features integrated cable system uh, that hides the cables from the wind um, and also integrates them while maintaining compatibility with traditional bar and stem systems. The new bike features 32 millimeter tire spec, um, but a ton of versatility. So we're able to fit up to a 38 millimeter recommended tire size in the new bike, both front and rear, or 35 millimeters with hidden fender mounts uh, so that you can mount fenders on the bike and still maintain a really big volume tire. The, the bike leverages isospeed technology similar to the past where we have isospeed uh, in the head tube system, um, but we're leveraging the adjustable top tube isospeed similar to what was presented last year uh, with the new Madone SLR. Adjustable top tube isospeed has uh, an adjuster underneath the top tube that provides a range of compliance experiences as well as a damper in the seat tube that gives you more controlled ride uh, on the whole. In total, the new bike is 27% more compliant than the previous Domani um, in the rear and provides a much smoother total ride as a package. We've also focused a lot on integration of the new bike and one of the coolest features uh, is the fact that we have an integrated storage space in the down tube. What that means is that you have space for a multi-tool that's integrated into the storage door. Um, and then up inside the frame, we have a, a, a tool roll that provides uh, an entire flat kit uh, of stuff that can fit inside the, the frame. The benefit of having everything inside the frame is that it cleans out your pockets so that you can store nutrition, your phone, credit cards. Um, and it also provides a clean saddle so that we can put a flare R on the back that's always pointing in the right direction, always visible and in the optimized position. So what we're showing you today is the new Domani SLR um, in an icon paint scheme. We have a, a beautiful array of six different colorways available through Project One. This is the new Cosmos color, um, av again available on the Domani SLR. We also have a Domani SL family of product um, that ranges from an Altegra or Force ETAP um, electronic kit all the way down to Tiagra 10 speed so that you get a whole range of price points available um, to fit any budget. The new bike is available starting at the end of July um, and available in all retail locations globally. Uh, the new bike we believe is the most comfortable best endurance road bike that we've ever presented uh, to the world. So that's most of the new details of the new bike uh, and some lovely Chicadas in the background there. It's very hot out in nice. Galvignano. Yeah, excellent. So yeah, lots of new tech to talk about. So tell us a little bit more about the, um, the Isospeed. It's a, it's a new departure uh, this time. Okay, so Trek has had Isospeed in the Domani since it was launched in 2012. And it used to be that it used the flex in the seat tube to get the deflection, so there was a pivot. Um, uh, or a decoupler they used to call it, they call it a pivot now incidentally, um, in the seat tube junction and the whole of the seat tube could, could flex. So that gave you a little bit of um, suspension. Um, that worked quite well, but what it, what it was affected by was the size of the seat tube. So if you had a very small frame, like an extra small frame, um, there obviously there's not as much lever, so you can't get as much suspension. What they've done is they've moved it to um, a top tube system. So what happens is you have, um, one member that's like the top of the seat post and it goes underneath the top tube and that pivots around that point and there's a slider that you can move along what is effectively the spring lever along the bottom of the top tube that adjusts the amount of suspension travel you get and there's a damper in the back now as well to, to damp suspension it's actually like a very clever system and the adjustability uh, is that easily done yeah it's just a case of um 
uh, loosening an Allen bolt on the bottom of the top tube, uh, moving a little plastic slider along, just pushing it up and down. It's actually uh, it's pretty clever. So Trekker boasting that this is a faster Dimani than, than the previous version. Yeah. And how have um, they achieved that? That was the main thing they, they were talking about, actually, even more so than the, uh, than the new ISO speed. So, I mean, effectively what they've done is they've moved it from where it was in terms of aerodynamics to about halfway between there and where the Madone is. So it's not as aerodynamic as the Madone and, it, and it's not meant to be but they have improved it considerably. I mean, they've put some numbers on that. So what they say is over the old, over the old Damani, it saves 12 watts at 40 kilometers an hour. Good stats. Good stats. And um, over an hour's riding, it will save you a minute at 40 kilometers an hour. That's what they say. So, you know, reasonable, reasonable improvement over the old bike. How they've done that essentially is they've used a lot of those truncated airfoil shapes that they've got in the Madone and also they've tidied up the, the cable routing a lot. So all of the cables now run internally um, and they go in behind the um, steerer tube. So they go, they're, they're guided underneath. You can get a system integration that pulls them all in, but actually it also works for the standard bar and stem. It's quite, it looks quite neat. So Jordan mentioned there in the footage uh, about the storage within the frame. Yeah, it's clever. Um, so it's basically a hatch into, into the down tube. So there's a little lever underneath the, underneath the bottle cage. You pull it off and there's room in there for, for basically everything you need to fix a puncture. So everything that you'd normally put in a seat pack, you can put inside the, um, the down tube. And the fact that you don't need to put a seat pack on now, the fact that you've got that internal storage means that there's room on the back of the saddle for uh, a flare R light. So they, you know, with the Madone, they, they created the, um, the new seat post with the, the, with the direct mount sure. for the line. So they're using that again in the Damani, which is, you know, it's good. It's always there and it's always pointing in the right direction. They're, they're very they've always been very keen on daylight running lights, Trek. So um, that's kind of why they've done that, I think. Across the road bike world, we're getting wider tyres, but um, yeah. Trek have really stepped it up. Yeah, they have. I mean, the, they spec it. They spec the Damani now with 32 mil tyres. They've made a new R3 road tyre that's in a 32 mil width. The bike will actually take a 38 mil tyre or a 35 mil tyre with mudguards. So it's, again, it's got integrated mudguard mounts. You can you can fit full mudguards to it. And even that 38 mil, that's quite conservative. So that's with two mil to take account for the variations in tyre width and yeah. then four mil clearance. So an extra six mil effectively. So you could probably fit 40 mil in there quite easily. Which and that's, is massive which for an is endurance road bike. Huge for an endurance road bike, yeah, I mean there's loads of space. Um, the other thing they've done, interestingly, is they've moved back to a threaded bottom bracket. Yeah, so, why have they done that? Uh, because it's better and everyone knows <laughs> it, I think, is the main reason. Um, but obviously there was there was issues with a standard threaded bottom bracket that press fit and BB86 yeah, and all yeah, the other yeah, standards yeah. we're looking to address. One of the things that Trek has always wanted is a quite a nice wide bottom bracket shell because they say that that improves stiffness and you can see why that would be the yeah, case. Now with an external threaded bottom bracket you can't do that but what they've gone to is they've gone to um, the T47 standard. So that's um, a different standard with a bigger thread which allows you to run cables internally underneath the bottom bracket axle um, and they've gone for basically a full width shell um, with a very small flange to fit the external bottom bracket into the thread I mean it's, it's it looks quite neat and if, if you looked at it um, if you just glanced at it you'd think it was a was a press fit or a, oh, or really? a 386 or something like okay. that it's the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the flange of the actual bearing is is very narrow in fact what Trek has done is hack the standard a little bit so they've made the bottom bracket shell one mil narrower so they can have a slightly wider flange on the um on the bearing so it just makes it a little bit easier to get it in and out so this is all presumably quite high-end tech yeah so uh, we were riding the um, slr 9.9 .9 bikes with an icon paint job so about as expensive as they get i'd expect nothing less yeah absolutely um there's also an slr 7 series that also has the new iso speed decoupler below that there's also a range of sl series bikes so those are a new frame design so they follow the the aero design of the new frame but they don't have the new decoupler they have an old seat tube style decoupler sure. from the old demani and they are cheaper so they run down all the way to uh, tiagra level 
So the proof of the pudding is in the eating always. And, yeah, um, absolutely. You got a good bit of time on the bike? Yeah, we did about a 40, 45k um, gravel ride around Galzignano. So it's quite, um, it's quite a hilly area. We did a bit of road stuff. We did a bit of off-road stuff up to the point where you didn't really feel that comfortable on a road bike. So some, some more technical Sorry. kind of gravel sections. I mean, not, off, not like full off-road, but... No. Challenging. Challenging. Yeah. Challenging on 32 mil tyres yeah, right. and the bike performed very well. I mean, it feels really smooth and, and quick on the road. The 32 mil tyres roll really well. They reminded me a lot of Schwalbe's G1 Speeds, yeah. which are a similar size yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're a kind of similar construction with like a with a small tread um, and a big chamber. They felt really good. Um, once you take the bike off road, again, it's really comfortable. I mean, it, you do you do notice with those endurance road bikes that they do soak up a lot of the road buzz, yeah. and they soak up a lot of the the chatter of the kind of gravel surfaces off road as well. I guess that's the key feature, right? I mean, the reason you're going to buy a Demane versus anything else in the market is about the working of the ISO speed, whether you know in what, whatever form that happens to be on the on the model you get. Yeah, absolutely, and also you get what is effectively a full road bike but with the capability of fitting you know a, a really big tire yeah. so a 38 or a f even a 40 mil tire i mean the 32s are obviously big enough to to do quite a lot of the the suspension work themselves and obviously when you're riding it on unfamiliar terrain it's the first time you've ridden it it's difficult to it's know how to much judge, the tires right? are doing yeah, it's difficult to know how much the ISO speed is mm. doing but the overall effect is of a really comfortable bike there are a few provisos, so the R3 tyres that Bontrager has developed with Trek, um, those are really good on road and, and they're good off road, but they're a bit fragile for kind of the sharper rocky stuff that we were doing. Quite a few people have punctures. I mean, they're not really designed for that, they're more of a road tyre. You're pushing it there anyway, yeah. aren't you? But on, one of the things we did was like a big long flat gravel smash along the side of a canal and, you know, going, going you know, proper quick yeah. along there. They were really good tyres, you know, on a, on a mixed surface, so yeah, excellent. So that's the new Trek Demarnate. We're going to try and get one in as soon as we can for review on Road CC. If you've got any questions about the bike, um, ask them in the comments below. We'll get them answered for you. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this on Road CC. Cheers. Cheers. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this on Road CC. Cheers. Bye. I <laughs> came in quite strong with a bite. Again, otherwise I'm just a bite.